Welcome to the first video where we're gonna be working completely inside the school bus. It's, what What are you saying, Dale? It's campfire day. No, it's not campfire it day. Campfire day. It's nine o'clock, we got a campfire going. No, it's not campfire day, it's work on side the bus day. That's the crew's job, the supervisor is watching the fire. Oh, okay, <laughs> tend the fire till after work. All right, so we are officially at this point working on the inside of the school bus, and I know that everyone has been super excited to get the inside of the bus going and not be working on the outside. So the first thing and complications of the day is I have to finish sealing a few holes that are right here, and then I have to kind of rip out all this rubber area and figure out the transition from the cutaway of the bus to the van front end. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna have to figure out a little bit. Luke's gonna start pulling the seat out, and I'm gonna start patching the holes and get this whole thing started. Uh, we discussed the plan with the supervisor and we discussed the plan with the rest of the crew and what we decided we need to do is pretty much just transition this area right here, transition this area right here because we want to be able to close these gaps off from any type of water. Shouldn't actually take that long. I think, uh, I think we've got it figured out. The hardest part is always figuring it out once you figure it out. And it's just like screw, 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 rivet, 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 done, 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 next, next, next. Cut the B-roll. Cut the B-roll. I almost forgot that this bus was yellow for a second. It's because we're in the inside now. It's like we didn't do anything. If someone, if this is the first video that someone's watching and they're only seeing the inside of the bus, they don't even know what we've already been through. How about it, Dale? Oh. Well, why I picked the hottest day of the year to... You call that a fire? I sh you were in charge of that this morning. I Don't believe it's on film that Dale said he was in charge of the fire. The supervisor is watching the fire. Try again. <laughs> what? <laughs> Would you stop it? Look at that bus. Hey, Mike. Hey, wait, Luke, I want to explain what I'm doing. Oh, there's Mike. I want to explain what I'm doing real quick because uh, we just ripped out that French engine bay part to get the rubber mat out. And by doing that, we decided we're not going to put that engine piece back in. So, Luke, if you want to show them real quick, you can show them what I'm talking about, the engine piece. I think it looks funnier with you under the bus. No, no, no. Show, show them so we can, we can show them. Oh yeah, so this can come right out because it really doesn't do anything but have a couple cup holders, a couple cigarette lighters. You can just build a nice wooden box, make it a little more aesthetically pleasing and still functional. And then what we can do is instead of using the cigarette lighters, we can switch them out for like 12 volt USBs and then it will be a lot easier to be able to plug your phone in or GPS or things like that while driving. The other problem is, is that within that unit is the heater shut off, which I don't know if you can actually get them to see it, but there's a shut off valve right here for the rear coolant heater that we already pulled out. So because we don't need this anymore and it's already ewed off down there, uh, I'm just gonna release the tension on this line and we're gonna pull that cord right out and then uh, we're good to go. Bob's your uncle. Bob is your uncle. And I'm gonna, you know, I realize I'm sorry everyone that 
the position of this camera angle is probably as disorienting for you as it is for me. But disorienting? How's yeah, that? That might be better. Well, because we're, yeah, we're all like upside down. But either way, don't worry. We're gonna get through this together. That might be better. No, you stay there, Mike. The dash is back together and luckily we didn't break any of the little plastic pieces. I hate taking dashes apart because it's just so difficult to make sure you don't break anything. What we're gonna be start working on now is we're gonna start these patch pieces to get the floor sealed up and I'm actually gonna pull the welder out again and I'm gonna start welding up a bunch of the holes. There's a bunch of little pinholes in the floor but this is all steel so I can just tack weld all the holes together and I, while I'm talking, Luke already Luke already figured it out. Just put that right on. Good job, Luke. You're done. Like that you just. That was easy. That was easy. Wow, where'd you get that piece from? That was just that was extra. Sitting around. That was just sitting around, and it's perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, apparently I'm just gonna weld, and Luke's gonna watch me weld because he finished it already. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So good. That actually looks really good. Feels, yeah. I know one thing for sure. I've never been so close before. You're not gonna believe it. The floors are completely patched right here. Luke did an amazing job doing the transition to the staircase and getting this part completely done and waterproofed. And then we got our piece in right here, which is the transition from the cutaway to the actual bus front. Uh, in most rigs, those are actually gonna be waterproofed. In this particular case, uh, there was a gap in between, so I had to fill it so that no water would come through. But now that we have all these pieces in, the rest of the bus is ready to go. So this next step is gonna be sealing the entire floors and we're gonna paint them. And then once they're painted, we're ready to start putting the subfloor in an insulation. And whew, that's a good thing to say. I'm gonna get to cleaning and then we can look at starting to paint.
almost. Well, you know what, Luke? Oof. You know what, Luke? What? We just finished it. <clears throat> you know what the sad thing is, Luke? Now we just have to wait for it to dry, which means we really can't do much else for the rest of the day. I guess we have to go rebuild your FJ. Oh, wait. Did we forget to tell everyone that in the background of building the school bus, we're also rebuilding Luke's FJ, and there'll be a quick series coming out in the near future? Okay, yeah, let's go build the FJ. Hashtag ad. <laughs> ad? What do you mean? We're just letting them know that we're building out your FJ as well. Oof. Yeah, the bus looks good though. It's true, at this point, the entire bus is completely painted and primed, so we just have to wait until it dries. Give it a really good long cure time, make sure that it sets in and it's good to go. But the next time that we pretty much pick up the camera and get working on this bus, is gonna be starting to put down the subfloor, so it's time to watch paint dry. The school bus paint is completely dry, which means this thing is officially ready for subfloor. We've got all of our stuff set up on the outside of the bus. The tools that we need here, we've got our chop saw, a hammer just in case, screw gun, impact, bits, foam board, two by threes. And believe it or not, that's, that's pretty much all we need. So the plan is gonna be pretty much to create a grid pattern on the actual floor of the bus where then the foam board is going to fit in between. And then we're gonna throw our plywood on top and that's pretty much a subfloor. It should go in pretty quick. And uh, this is the first time we're putting wood inside the school bus. So that is moving ahead. We're on the inside of the bus. We're, yes, we're no longer on the outside of the bus. We're actually doing something on the inside. And uh, the official, the official first cut is 91 inches, Luke. In about, I don't know, five minutes, we've already got a bit of a grid work set up right here. Uh, just calling out cuts, Luke's outside cutting, I'm in here laying them down. Dale is giving sage advice about how not to make mistakes. And uh, if you look right here, we've got our backside framed out. And what we're gonna be doing is filling this in with some foam insulation, which is currently sitting right there as the lighting changes. The reason why we're doing it this way is because that foam board is rated for a high level of compression and we're using three quarter plywood on top of this structure. So we're trying to use the least amount of wood as possible because in terms of insulation value, this wood is rated at like half, if not more, the value of the foam board. So the more foam board that's touching the ground, the better because it's gonna give us less thermal breaks coming through our actual subfloor. So we're gonna be going with this type of grid structure right here and continuing it right on through the front. Then we can cut our foam board, get it pieced in those spaces, and then get our subfloor down. It goes in pretty quick, especially once you start getting a plan and figuring out your measurements. How's it going out there, Cutmaster? Dandy. Dandy. We've got most of our framing in at this point. Luke is starting to measure out what we're gonna be doing with the actual foam boards because we wanna maximize these distances so that our cuts will have the least amount of waste. 
But uh, what we're gonna start doing now that we have most of the flooring in, is we wanna start piecing it in with the actual foam and then possibly getting some plywood on top. Mostly because what I wanna do is I wanna use the plywood to lock in the two by fours. So one thing I'm gonna be doing here is not screwing straight through the floor. Uh, if you've watched our previous videos or if you haven't and you wanna check it out, I'll put the build series right here. Um, but we've spent so much time waterproofing this bus, the last thing we wanna do is put perforations through the floor. So what we're gonna be doing is running a floating floor locked together with the plywood and then the weight of that floor plus some of the walls that we're putting in and the weight of the cabinets, it's never gonna move, it's not gonna be an issue uh, and it's completely tight. So all the cuts are tight from the back wall to the front wall so none of these boards actually shift for the most part anyway right now. Um, so that's what we're doing on this one and uh, I think Luke's got our first measurement put together so we're gonna get cutting some foam board and start installing from the back forward, see what we get to. What's our first measurement, Luke? Uh, 24 by 88. 24 by 88, that's perfect. Half of a 4 by 8 sheet. Well, now that we have the entire back part done, middle section foamed, and this side's not, it might be a good time to kind of talk about what we're trying to do here and how we're doing it. So right here, we just have our metal floor and our free floating wood. Then we have our uh, pieces of foam flush with the edge that is going completely through. And then we've got our plywood on top of that, making a full top seal. And then that is, screwed and glued down. One thing that we are doing is using this aluminum insulation tape. Uh, we're putting it along the seams in between the wood and the insulation. The only reason why I'm doing this is because I'm a real uh, specific person about making things non-passive with insulation. Um, I don't want any type of air to be able to come through. We made these as tight as we possibly could and now we're just gonna seal up the little air gap in between the wood. So we're gonna get some more of this taping down, get the nest piece of plywood and then finish up the front of the bus. pretty quickly getting the entire back of the bus and the subfloor in. Uh, we are going to in the future be boxing out the wheel wells and then strapping up the sides with wood. But right now we're focusing on getting the subfloor completely done. So what we have to do now is according to the measurements, we don't want to waste any bit. So we're not going to rip this piece right here due to its distance. We're going to bring a four foot sheet straight all the way up into the cab, which means the back of the bus is subfloored. The front of the bus we need to figure out and that's going to be pretty much, what? 
I don't know, what did I say? The back of the bus is subfloored. That's true, I did just say that. I said the back of the bus is subfloored, and the next thing on the list is going to be figuring out this cab area and how we're gonna transition straight on through. And then, okay, let me just, oh, just look at it. Back of the bus, front of the bus. Back of the bus, front of the bus. Hey Dale. Hey. I think we got a subfloor in. I think we did too, Mike. Took a little bit longer than we'd hoped, but it's gonna be right when we get it done, and that's the important thing. That's so. very true. All right, the subfloor is officially in the school bus. The only thing that we still have to do is uh, finish out the transition up here in the actual front cab area. We're gonna wait on this until a little bit farther in the future because we're also gonna be rebuilding this dash area around the back of the engine. So we kinda gotta do a little bit of measuring, a little bit of scribing to be able to do this and match it into the floor correctly. So there's a little bit of work still to be doing in the front, but that's exciting right there. That is that is a that is progress. And the next step really at this point, now that the subfloor is down, is gonna be boxing out the wheel wells and then we're actually gonna start strapping the entire inside. So I've already got some pieces here to, that we can look at. So essentially, we got this to look forward to and all of these pieces in the next video are gonna be going in so that we can get ready for spray foam. But, but now that all of this in, that pretty much means that we can move on to the next step. So you can take a look at this guy. Next step, wheel wells, sidewood, and we're moving on. So I just wanna say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing the subfloor go in and we'll see you next time.